Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having uh, a great closeout to the week. It has been, uh, <laughs> to say the least, a very eventful week and it's still coming. But, you know, uh, what I say, if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. And as long as I'm still in the fight, I'm still swinging and I am going all out until I take my last. Uh, I encourage everyone to do that. Um, if you are familiar with the work that we do at the Odyssey Project in the inner city, uh, in the black community with boys, girls, young men, young women, uh, mental health, domestic violence, and the list goes on. The research Center, uh, Think Tank, uh, matter of fact, I'm actually doing a workshop on epigenetics and trauma. Uh, one second. Epigenetics and trauma. Uh, next week uh, for inner city families uh, sponsored by the Harris County uh, Sheriff's Department. Uh, research I've done for years and um, and it just keeps coming there's so many things going on in our community that we don't have a grasp of and that we don't uh, invest energy effort time and resources into understanding so that we can overcome it and uh, the impact on us is catastrophic and devastating uh, to say the least um, but I'm asking if you believe in the work we're doing. You saw the video that preceded this. Click the links on the description box. Go inside of the um, des description box. Uh, you can also give through the organization's cash app. Um, and... Um, and give um, I'm going to try to get through this as quick as possible like I said so much going on uh, so um, fortunately what I'm going to talk about isn't as heavy as some of the stuff that I have to deal with so I'll probably actually end up feeling better by the time I get through this than I do right now but um, there are a couple of pictures floating around uh, social media and the internet of Jonathan Majors. One is from when he first got started, a young cat. He's young now, uh, born in 89. Hell, he's younger than several of my kids. But, um, well, yeah. And, um, it's not that the pictures are floating around because he's gone through a dramatic transformation physically, obviously. 
Uh, but if you go back and you look and you read and you gain an understanding, which I tend to do of people who uh, come across and I consider to be successful. And let me be very clear here in explaining how I define success. For those who don't follow me in the vein of what I do, and all you know is the doctor who comes on and talks about black issues, uh, I operate in the field of human uh, behavior, human performance. And I um, spend a lot of time studying people in I work with people to help them be more successful. Uh, it's what I do for a living. I also obviously do a lot in helping people confront trauma. Uh, those are the two things I spend the vast majority of my time dealing with, one side of another, one or the other. Um, and it's a passion and purpose of mine. Uh, but I don't define, I don't de uh, declare him uh, to be successful because he's a celebrity. That's not how I'm defining success. I consider him to be success when I look at where he started and he simply set out and said, this is who I'm going to be. And then he put in the work. He had the right frame of mind. He did the things. This isn't about me saying he's a great man. I don't know how he treats the women in his life. I don't know if he has a kid, if he treats that kid the way. What I'm saying is as a man who set out with a path and a, and a destination, he set his mind on it. He went after it and he achieved it. To me, that's success. It was success long before Lovecraft, long before um, the uh, Western, I can't think of it now, uh, that I actually really enjoyed it, man. I haven't seen the Ant-Man or the Creed movie yet. Uh, but I know that they're both doing well at the box office. And even though uh, the Ant-Man movie isn't getting a lot of rave reviews, his role is in that movie. To me, that is a testament to him hammering on his craft, not just content with being an actor, but wanting to master his craft and follow behind some of those who have paved the way, the Sidney Portiers, the Denzel Washingtons, and, and, and so forth, and uh, Samuel L. Jackson's and Morgan Freeman's and all these people who have had these long, stellar careers. Uh, again, I don't celebrate them because they're celebrities. I, cel I don't celebrate them because they're celebrities. I celebrate them because they set out to do something. So to me, the, the sharing of these photos isn't what got my attention. It was the comments. It was some of the captions on people who were sharing it uh, for a quick laugh. For uh, Also, I noticed some passive hatred, you know, taking shots. Uh, to me, all I see is when I see the pictures side by side is I see transformation. Uh, physical transformation is simply a reflection of uh, mental, psychological, and emotional transformation. It is the reflection of a commitment to being disciplined in accomplishing something. It isn't reserved solely for celebrities. Now, obviously, someone with money uh, has the ability to have uh, people prepare his meals, uh, work with a nutritionist, work with a trainer, all these different things. Um but I know people who don't have any of those things and still commit and get it done. And I celebrate them with equal ferocity and equal appreciation because it's not about whether, whether they're well known or whether the world is recognizing them. It's that they are walking a path that they chose to walk and they are walking it with consistency. They are walking it with fervor. They're walking it with passion. That's the thing that I celebrate. That's the thing that uh, makes me uh, look at it and smile. Now, here's the thing that really gets me is why is it that no matter what our people do, we find a way to marginalize them? We find a way to shadow their moment. There's going to be somebody, if it hasn't happened already, that's going to have gone back and dug up something that this dude did or said 20 years ago. 
uh, that says we shouldn't support him and all of that. And maybe it's some things that may, should make us think and maybe we should ask him what he thinks now because I'm not the same person I was 20 years ago. I'm not the person I was 15 years ago. And so we have to give our, give each other time to grow, but it's just the negative vibe or the negative, the inherent negativity that we hold for one another. Uh, they're going to be those who are going to give celebrities passes, no matter what they do. There's that group. That's a problem. And then there are going to be those who can appreciate the hard work and the commitment it takes to be at the top of your game, even for a short period of time. And then there are going to be those that simply are not going to be happy with anyone else's success because they're not happy with themselves. And there lies to me the issue. There are far too many of us that are enraged But not because, or in outrage, not because of something that is worthy of our ire, but simply because we're not happy with where we're at. We believe we should be further, but we haven't put in the work. We haven't uh, shown the fortitude and the commitment and the endurance, you know, for me to have written 26 books required discipline for me to have started the number of companies I've started took discipline for me to have done the number of speaking engagements I've done over the course of my career, which is astronomical, is because of discipline for me to have accomplished the different things that some things I don't talk or bring out about because I don't want to seem braggadocious and I don't want to give the impression that doing that is what makes you successful. To me, if you have a worthy goal that you are pursuing and you are making progress, you are successful and I celebrate you and I'm willing to work with you um, if you're willing to work with me. Um, and that's the thing that I think we are missing and in, in, in this is anything someone else has, if it's a passion of yours and you're willing to put in the time, energy, and effort, then you can have it. The thing is, you're only looking at the end result. You're looking at the destination. You're looking at what the outcome is, and you don't know the story behind it. You don't know the number of hours and years he put in, how many times he auditioned and was rejected and turned down and went home dejected. You don't know that. You don't know how many times he went over his lines uh, only to get there and not remember them and, 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 and feel embarrassed. You don't know all of the things every person that has gotten to a certain level in their field have, has had moments that they look back and say, man, I really sucked then. And then you sit up and you look and you say, man, but I didn't quit. And that's what I think we should be teaching our children. Number one, know who you are. Number two, have a very strong sense and identity of what it is you are going to become and what you're going to do and to have a refuse uh, to have a mindset and a level of discipline and commitment that refuses to relent or give in when things become difficult because as a black person in this white racial caste system you're going to face adversity in levels and in ways that other people will not have to. You're going to face opposition in ways and levels of intensity that other people will not have to. And you're going to have to have the wherewithal and the understanding and the commitment to sit up and say, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give in. No surrender, no retreat. You're going to have to have some, be able to have some moments in weeks like the one I had this week and sit up and say, I'm still standing and I'm still going and I'm not done yet. You're going to have to be willing to sit up and go out there and do it. So when I see somebody like J Jonathan Majors or even Michael B. Jordan and look at where they came from before they were uh, 
the heartthrob of Hollywood. I look at the journey and I say, okay, I remember when this kid did this. I remember when this kid did this. And there is no overnight sensation. Just because you didn't know them didn't mean they weren't working. And, you know, you, you, you put in the work. You, you get up every day. And we should be not only teaching it to our children, we should be living it in front of them. We should be uh, examples of what's possible in this world. For those of you who are celebrating him, I commend you. For those of you who don't want to get caught up in celebrity worship, I commend you. Um, but there's nothing wrong with acknowledging someone's work ethic to be what it is they desire to be. And until we create a world that can encompass the desires and the passions of our people uh, autonomously and independently, we can't judge them for seeking to go out and accomplish it somewhere else. I think that's extremely unrealistic. I think it's extremely selfish. Would I like to see a world to where um, I don't have to worry about uh, watching young brothers vie for uh, contracts in white owned uh, leagues, whatever uh, sport it is, or in a white dominated industry in entertainment and on any level whether it's comedy whether it's music whether it's uh theater or in corporate america that we can have our own fortune 500 don't you think that that would be the but we, we don't want to build that anyway but we want to complain about those who are getting on in that and my thing is the getting on in a white world isn't successful to me the ability to go get what I want in life, despite the fact that they're trying to stop me, is. I remember uh, when when uh, they came up with the movie Man of Our Man of Honor, um, with Cuba Gooding Jr. and Robert De Niro, and I decided to go read the story of Carl Brashear because there's a point in this movie where he is. Be, they're doing everything and they can't they can to him. he's going to be the first deep sea diver in the navy first first black deep sea diver in the navy and they're doing everything they could to make him quit but he's good so he's not going to fail on his own but they're trying to make him quit and he won't quit i mean he damn near dies because they cut a hole in his bag and when he was supposed to be down putting this stuff together he stayed down there until he found every piece and he put it together and he comes up and the guy and, and, and the admiral is looking at a distance because he's already told him to fail him. And he actually likes him, but he's told him to fail him. So he looks over at him and said, why are you fighting this for fighting for this? Or why do you want it so bad? And he says, because they told me I couldn't have it. And. I'm not at that point. I'm not chasing anything just because someone says I didn't have it, but I understand. I understand. But when I decide I want something, them being in the way won't stop me. So I can appreciate someone who says you have something I want and while it's sitting on your table, I'm coming for it. Now, if we want a different behavior, we have to create an alternate table. We have to sit up and say, OK, you know, you're over there doing this for this studio and doing that for this. And, and you're on this label and oh, start the labels, create the studios, create an environment that is conducive to generating black quality uh, products and black wealth. It's possible. It's beyond possible. We did it with a whole lot less time out of slavery. We built it. Yeah, we ran into difficulties. Yeah, they burned it down. But we have different means. We have different methods. We also have access to a lot of things that we can create in the way of allyship that can protect us. But we can't sit by idly and be upset with people because they're getting on in a world that we don't want to agree with. 
I, I, I would prefer we all do our thing, but we got to have a thing to do. Hell, I, I sit up and I'll go hard in the paint to prepare our children, to protect our children, to advocate for our children, to advocate for our women, to advocate for mental health. I do it. I've been doing it for 30 years. And when I ask you guys to get behind it, crickets. But we want to hold black people accountable for doing something and not going into the white world to do it. You got to give them something to do. They got to believe that if they step out on that thing and they alienate the thing that they, that they can feed off of, that you're going to be there for them to have something to tap into. We haven't shown that as a people. We've shown that we feed on our own. That we turn on our own. We look in the council. You say something. Do something. Breathe hard. We'll cancel your ass. Even if we didn't support you to put you where you are, we'll work hard to bring you down. That's the thing that got me on this. It's like, man, this brother, the transformation isn't even the physiological transformation. That's a reflection of the transformation that took place in his mind. The growth that took place in his mind, the development and the strengthening of his mind is simply reflected in his body. I would love to see us get to a place where we are working together, where we are building together, where we're getting stronger together, where we are growing together. I would love to see that. On that note, um, Look, I'm going to get ready to get out here. As I said in the beginning, if you believe in the work we're doing, show some love. Go to the description box. And let's start that. Let's start with building something that works. Because i got to get my head right just to be prepared to work with these families and, and talk about adverse childhood experiences, talk about epigenetics and trauma, to talk about uh, how it's impacting the health of our people long term, how it's impacting heart disease, how it's impacting cancer, how it's contributing to uh, non-social or antisocial behavior, how it's contributing to uh, the incarceration rate and so much. And I've got to do it with white men from the sheriff's department present because my people won't get behind it so we can do it in-house. But we'll show and post how we rolling up in the Caribbean, how we in Dubai, how we're all that. Do all your things. But you don't get to do that and then complain about what's going on and you're not contributing to it. Go do you. Go do you. I don't own your money. You don't owe me anything. But when I see us acting the way we're acting about what we don't like with what we see, but we aren't on it. Man, let something happen with one of them. I will never forget, within a month and a half, Darren Wilson was $500,000 plus deep in his pockets for killing Mike Brown solely because it looked like Ferguson was going to flip on him. And, 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 and he was going to be prosecuted. 500,000. And those people rallied. And you can look at some of the comments. They didn't. Every, now, some of them were real rednecks and couldn't, couldn't stand us. And was commending him for what he did. But it was a lot of them like, hey, this poor guy needs our help. They're programmed to act. Same thing in the Asian community. Same thing in the Latino community. Same thing in the Arab community. Us? What are you going to do with that? What do you need that for? If you pay attention to what's going on, you can't think everything that I do is free. Don't cost me. If I'm sitting there talking to you now, guess who I'm not talking to? A client. If I'm doing research, I'm writing an article. If I'm putting things together to work with people in the community, if I got someone that can't afford me, but in the community that needs me, guess who I'm not working with? A person who can pay me. When it's time to do research and you got to pull all this stuff together, research is expensive. That's why you're always looking at these these PhDs and these researchers, these professors that are looking for grants and uh, funding for their research. It's not cheap. Yet I keep popping it out. 
So when I see somebody like Jonathan Majors that has walked the line and did whatever he did, you know, if I see something that is questionable to me, I'll, I'll respond to it then. But what I see is a person that simply laid a path for himself. You know, I've seen it all. You know, it shows sure it's funny how uh, money can make you attractive. No, him being a celebrity and being out there. And yeah, the, the, the body, but he's the same person, same face. So it wasn't something he did that made him more attractive. It's what you see and how you see him. What you give value to. You know, what, let's be honest. If it wasn't for the body that he's developed over the last six or seven years, because he was smaller than that just five or six years ago. So what if, if it wasn't for that and he wasn't Jonathan Majors, how many would be given in play? That's not his fault. He went out and got what he wanted. It just, all the extras came with it. But to sit up and use that, you know, now the thing is, if it's, like I said, the same pictures next to each other, and somebody said, man, this is an awesome transformation. Look where this guy came from. I'm all for that. And when and it took me so long to catch on because that's what I thought it was, man. Look, man, that dude has come along. And then I start reading what, it, what was on. I'm like, these people tripping. But nevertheless, that's where we're at. So... I've said what I said. Like I said, if you're going to support the work we do, we really do need it. Uh, go to the description box, click the link, and give. On that note, I'm getting ready to get out of here. Thank you uh, for letting me take up your time. On that note, I'm out.